Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 1st of December and this quick preview of the week beginning the 4th of December and it's quite a busy week. We've got an EU summit, we've got non-farm payrolls and we've got services PMIs as well as a couple of central bank rate decisions from the Reserve Bank of Australia and the Bank of Canada. But before we get on to that we're having a quick look at US equity markets which have continued to go from strength to strength. The Dow Jones above 20, 24,000. We've also got the S&P 500 above 2,600 and the Nasdaq has also made new record highs. And it's largely down to an expectation that we will get some form of tax reform over the coming days if we haven't already. That's likely to be confirmed in the coming days at the moment. US policymakers are struggling to come to an agreement on reducing the corporate tax rate from 35% to 20%. So that's really driving expectations with respect to the US stock market. So I think if there is some disappointment there, then we could see a little bit of a sell-off. There's also the thorny issue of the debt ceiling, which has as yet um, is, is as yet unresolved. And we've also got the Federal Reserve rate meeting later this month, which is expected to push US interest rates up once more. Uh, by 25 basis points. We do know who the new head of the Fed is. We've also um, heard announcements for new Fed policymakers. Marvin Goodfriend um, will be joining the Fed board uh, to take one of the vacant slots there. So we should also get some clarity as well on his stance on US interest rates going forward because at the moment we've seen a little bit of a sell-off in the US dollar on an expectation that US rate rises next year may not be as many as the markets are pricing in. That being said, US 10-year yields are around about 2.4%, but short-term rates, particularly two-year rates, are heading up. So the US yield curve is flattening out, and I think that's why you're seeing the dollar come under pressure. So let's have a quick look at this week, because we've got some important rate decisions from the RBA and the Bank of Canada. And what has been notable, despite the fact that US markets have continued to be very, very bullish, is that commodity currencies have come under a significant amount of pressure. So if we look at the dollar Canada, for example, despite a rising oil price, the Canada has been weakening and it's pushing against a very important resistance level, as well as the 200 day moving average around about 129.30. So it'll be very interesting in the coming week what the Bank of Canada says with respect to its view on the Canadian economy. Um, particularly the housing market as well, given the fact that we've just had two rate rises this year from the Bank of Canada and the fact that the oil price is now around $60 a barrel, which should be Canada positive, but thus far has been anything but. So keep an eye on the dollar CAD. That's going to be very, very interesting over the course of the next couple of days and the Aussie dollar as well, because the Aussie dollar has also been on a slow downward decline. And here again, we're approaching some very, very key support levels on the Aussie dollar, if we look at a weekly chart, we can see that the trend line from the 2016 lows comes in around about 75 cents. So around about 80 points above that at the moment. Um, if we then change that to a daily chart, we can also see that um, we've, we've got the November lows around about 75.30, 75.20. So around about that 75 level, very, very key. Again, very dependent on what the RBA's view of the Australian economy is. What we have seen, and I think what is a little bit worrying, is that some of the Chinese PMI that we've seen over the past few days has been a little bit on the weak side. So maybe there's a few concerns about a softening in the Chinese economy as we head into year end. Also worth keeping an eye on the pound this week. We've hit a two-month high against the dollar, um, testing that 136.50 area that we saw earlier this year. I think what's particularly interesting about this particular chart is, the, is how resilient the pound has been, particularly against the dollar, but also, I think, against the euro. Now, if we look back over a slightly longer time frame, what I've done is I've taken the 2014 peaks of 171.90. Seems a long time ago now, but there it is. And I've, I've calculated some retracements from the lows of around about 119.80, 119.50. It really depends on where you take your low from. But ultimately, I think if we look at the 38.2% retracement level, we're looking at around about 138.40 between 1 and 139.50. So there's some very, very key resistance levels starting to come into play over the course of the next few days. And much will depend on the EU summit 
which is due on the which is due to start on the 4th of December Theresa May will be looking to convince European leaders to give the green light to the beginning of trade talks there has been some talk that there is an agreement on the divorce bill the thorny issue of the Irish border is the next issue to be resolved and it and it is proving to be a little bit more complicated than at first envisaged however um, at the moment I think there is an expectation that common sense will prevail and some form of compromise will be put together and the market is currently pricing that in if however we don't get that then expect the pound to drop sharply back to this trendline support from the lows that we saw in March this year which currently comes in around about the low 131s 132s also have non-farm payrolls this week again a very important uh, number but less so now I think given the fact that we're expecting a rate rise later this month pay particular attention to wages because they were slightly disappointing in the October numbers dropped back to 2.4 percent we're expecting a move back to 2.7 percent if we do get a move back to 2.7 percent obviously that will be dollar positive and we could see a rebound in the dollar um, which has been on the decline over the course of the past two or three weeks expecting a number of around about 210,000 slightly lower from the October 261 we've also got global services PMIs um, later this week pretty much from all over the globe that has been one of the um, more positive areas for growth certainly in the European economy but also in the UK we've got construction PMI services PMI industrial production so very data heavy week this week but ultimately, I think the main focus for me this week is likely to be on those rate decisions from the RBA and the Bank of Canada, but also the EU summit and the US employment report. And of course, whether or not we get any form of tax reform. Now, in that context, the, the pound has actually been weighing on the FTSE 100. Very, very important level around about 72.80. That's a very key support level was the June lows, the July lows, the August lows. We did dip below that briefly. In September so if we do break below that then 7200 is a very 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 important level but ultimately we're still in a range still likely to be within a range as we head towards Christmas and I think the big question at the moment is one of the big questions of many is will we get a Santa Claus rally well given how far we've come this year you have to ask yourself the question whether or not that's feasible with the DAX we're in a bit of a channel range 13 1250 on the top side 12,870 on the downside I think we will stay within that range I don't expect to see any new highs this year at the same time I don't really expect markets to fall off a cliff either so that's it for this week thank you very much for listening Michael Houston talking to you from CMC markets